This is Marisol Castro for Connecticut Public. And I'm Chef Plum, and we're your hosts for this episode. Today we're with the co-owners of Bloodroot, a feminist vegetarian restaurant in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Bloodroot in Bridgeport's historic Black Rock neighborhood, with views of the Long Island Sound, is unlike any other restaurant in Connecticut. You know, it started out as a collective in 1977, where women could gather to talk about politics, buy books, share simple vegetarian dishes. But its days as a collective are over. And you might find only a few Bloodroot cookbooks for sale now, but the food at the heart of Bloodroot remains vibrant, an expression of the values and beliefs of its owners. The food is unpretentious, globally inspired, plant-based, and timeless. Salma Miriam, Noel Fury, thank you so much for joining us today. Two wonderful human beings, but icons here in the nutmeg state. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us. Thank you. We really do feel like we're home right now. <laughs> this place is absolutely stunning yes. and homey. Yes. What went into making it this way? Well, I never worked in a restaurant, though I was a waitress in college, and Noel was also a waitress, and we really didn't know anything about restaurants, so we did what we liked. You build yourself sort of this feminist restaurant, feminist food. Why that, and what does that mean? Our purpose as feminists, which is what you're asking about, is number one, what would be feminist food. And way back there, we had two friends, a man who'd written a book about animal rights and a woman who became the head of uh, Friends of Animals. And they said, if you're gonna do feminist food, you're not gonna be eating animals. Mm. Anyway, so I thought, well, I'm not a vegetarian, but I think I can do this. Our primary purpose is to not eat any other sentient creatures. Mm. The second purpose was and this is surely feminist for heaven's sakes, and it is this inclusivity, it's this thing of trying to talk about, represent, study, promote all the different human beings on this earth, all the different cultures. And I certainly believe this with all my heart and soul that the foods of different peoples are all wonderful in their own way, and I wanted to learn as much as I could about that. The third part is, as a woman, as a Jew, I have been in restaurants where, you know, they look over you and, well, who else is here? You know, is mm -hmm. there someone, a man or something else, mm -hmm. you know? And so I really, really want everyone who walks in the door to feel welcome, whether they're fat or whether they are a different color or whatever clothes they're wearing or whatever lifestyle they're living, I want them to feel comfortable and welcome here, and I have always felt that way. I love hearing you talk about our ancestors, right? Yes. Um, and indigenous foods and indigenous cultures. Yes. This has become very in vogue now, mm -hmm. if yes. you look at yes. restaurants yes. in all parts of the country, even here in our yes. state. It's important to both of you to be inclusive, obviously, as feminists, yes. but even the folks that you bring into the kitchen, uh, I know you mentioned an Indian cook, a Mexican mm -hmm. cook, yes. Puerto mm -hmm. Rican cooks. Mm -hmm. How, w what inspired that decision? How do you maintain that today? You know, Bridgeport, most of all, the treasure of Bridgeport is the diversity of its people. Mm -hmm. I just love all the Absolutely. different kinds of people that walk in the door here. It mm -hmm. is wonderful mm -hmm. to, to see them. And somewhat recently, maybe eight or 10 years ago, we were having problems getting part-time workers mm -hmm. and we learned about the Mercy Center in Bridgeport. And mm -hmm. they had immigrant women who needed jobs. And wow, what a treasure. Man. What a mm -hmm. treasure. We wow. have about uh, four women here from there yeah. that we've gotten from the Mercy Center from different countries, from Honduras, El Salvador, uh, Carol's from Jamaica, mm -hmm. and we have a Haitian woman also. Carol didn't come through the, the no. Mercy Center, but uh, each one of them brings their, their culture with them. And for folks who don't know the Mercy Center in Bridgeport, uh, what uh, is it? It's a, uh, an organization. It used to be Catholic. It's now non-sectarian, and it is a, a school for women in need. And some of them are local women from Bridgeport, and some of them are new immigrants. And what they do is they help them toward a lot of different things. It is the most amazing organization. And the women that come from there, whatever they're teaching them, comes here too. And that's wow. valuable. You know, they teach them what's important, how to, how to manage in this mm -hmm. culture, which, you know, is different from theirs. I just really love the relationship yeah. you now, know, between them and us and them. 
That's yeah, I, I, the one, another thing that I want to say about the relationship is that uh, it's a rare place where you can have the sort of intimacy and uh, closeness with people and learn as much about them as we can in the kitchen with these women. And I, I've said over and over again, this is an incredible privilege to know yes. people that are so different from us yes. and to share, share our work together and yes. to share a little bit of their lives. Carol, who you mentioned, mm -hmm. you know, has been here for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you over she's, 10 years. She's, she's, she's fabulous. She kind of runs the kitchen. She mm -hmm. really does. She makes sure that people function as a group and have respect for each other and do the work. Or Jamaican jerk tofu has become like a staple here at Blood Root. Mm -hmm. um, ne never take it off the menu. It would never. be terrible. Never. <laughs> would it be a riot? Yes, there would be a riot. There would. Oh, what, gosh. Like, how did people, how did this happen? How did this become like such a popular dish? Because I would see Jamaican jerk tofu and Marcel, and I, I was like, really? Should we really? get that? And Sacrilege. Right, but it's, it's, a, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, it's delicious. That's, you know, and so somebody wants to try a little jerk and, you know, they know it's spicy and maybe it'll be okay, even though it's made with seitan and tofu right. and, uh, you know, soy chicken. Chicken. And uh, you taste it. And once you have it, you're, yeah. you're, you're hooked. Huh? You're hooked. Yeah. You're hooked. And then you tell your friend. And I mean, it's like yeah. that. And people, yeah. there's some people come back and every time they come here, they have the jerk. Yeah. There's a number of people and some of them pick out, well, I just want the tofu or I just want the, you know, whatever. But the, the sauce that she makes is really over the top. It's mm -hmm. really delicious. I can't, it's mm -hmm. sort of the same idea as the polenta. It's really incredibly delicious. You don't know how anything got this good. Yeah. And it's very spicy. And people who like spice, of course. And more and more people are into spicy foods these days, which I think is great. Uh, so that's how it is. It's word of mouth and word of mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you have withstood the test of time. How many restaurants have come and gone in, this, in this state? Do you think about success? Do you measure success? Do you think, oh my gosh, is this it? Like, are we done? Jean-Paul Van Gerichten, if you know who he is. I do know him. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> I wish I knew him. <laughs> I'll introduce you. Oh yeah, he's great. Uh, great and he, somebody asked him about retirement, and he said, it sounds like a disease. <laughs> 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 and I could not agree with him more. I'm going to be 85 years old in about three weeks. And you know, if you told me to retire, what would I do? Right. I mean, right. I, you know, and we both feel this way, you know? It's like, look, we work in a beautiful place. I mean, this is just good luck. Not every restaurant gets to do this. Mm -hmm. So if we're here 10 hours, you know, you can go out in the middle of the day and see what kind of birds there are flying over the water or what's in bloom. And we're eating really delicious food, which changes all with the seasons. It's not the same all the time. And we've got all these interesting people. There's not a meal that happens that somebody doesn't come in who is either very interesting or people that just mean a great deal to mm -hmm. us. And of course, the ones that come back regularly, it's like a big, big extended family. You love what you so do. So mm -hmm. I would miss them so much if I wasn't here. So yeah. then you're not retiring, lady. That's right. I'm not. No. You neither. No. Neither one of you. No, no. You can't. No. I figure the best thing will be is if I drop dead here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I do the same day. <laughs> no, that's a, not the best thing. That's awful. <laughs> well, well, it's not one, a bad, it one day a bad it's ending, happen. actually. I, I don't know. Yeah. Really, yeah. truly. Selma and Noel, thank you so much for sharing this thank with you. us. We thank really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Selma Miriam and Noel Fury are co-owners of Bloodroot, a feminist vegetarian restaurant located at the end of Ferris Street on the bank of Burr Creek in Bridgeport, Connecticut.